Welcome to this video from In 28 Minutes. Thanks for helping us provide awesome learning experiences to more than 300,000 learners across multiple platforms, Udemy, Safari and Pact. Let's welcome our lead instructor, Rangarao Karanam. In this video, we would look at something called centralized configuration. One of the centralized configuration solutions is Spring Cloud Config Server. It's part of the Spring Cloud suite of projects. Why do you want centralized configuration for your microservices? That's the question we would try and answer in this specific video. When we talk about microservices architectures, we will not be having single microservice, right? So you, instead of large application, we would be having multiple smaller microservices. This might be 10, 100, 200, 300, based on the size of the enterprise. And the interesting part is each of these microservices would have their own configuration. Which database to talk to? Which applications to talk to? How do you talk to other applications? All this configuration would be different for microservice one between all the environments. So you'd have a configuration for dev, QA stage, and production, which is different for microservice one. Similarly, all the other microservices also have their own configuration as well. If maintaining a huge configuration for one application is difficult, imagining maintaining configuration for 10 environments for 100 different microservices. So you're talking about 100 different sets of configuration, actually 1000 different sets of configuration to maintain. And it's a really, really big headache. And that's where centralized configuration server comes into picture. What you would do is you would give an ID to each of these microservices and you would give an ID for each of the environments and you would use those two IDs to identify the configuration from a centralized server. So you'd have a centralized config server for where we would store all the information about all the microservices. I mean, I'm talking about the configuration information. So we would have all the microservices and individual configuration for different environments stored in a specific centralized place. One of the most important things is security, right? So you don't want the configuration to be accessed by different people. So you should be really careful about the security around the centralized config server. As we discussed earlier, Spring Cloud Config Server is one of the best implementations for centralized config server around them. What you can do is you can have all the applications connect to the centralized config server. So you can have a Git repository where you store all the configuration. You can connect the Spring Cloud Config Server to the Git repository. There's a folder structure and a convention that you would need to follow. But once you follow that, you would be able to have your individual microservices say, I'm this specific microservice and I'm in this specific instance. And it would be able to get the configuration back. So each of these microservices should only need to know what is its name and what is its instance ID. So once you have those two things, you should be able to talk to the config server and get your specific configuration back. This helps in making sure that the operations team does not really need to configure anything on any of these microservices. All that the configuration team needs to focus on is to focus on configuring the Spring Cloud Config Server to start putting things into the, your Git repository. So all that the configuration team does needs to do is to update the configuration files which are present in the Git repository. And one of the solutions which is present with the Spring Cloud Config Server enables you to auto refresh. So as soon as you make a change in the Git repository, it can auto refresh the configuration in other microservices, in actually all the microservices. In this quick video, we looked at why you need centralized configuration for microservices. When you have tons of microservices and a lot of environments for each of these microservices, you don't want to maintain a lot of configuration in different places. If you have configurations stored in different places, in different repositories, in different environments, it becomes an operational headache. Your operations team will not really like it. And that's where the centralized configuration server comes into picture. All the configuration would be stored in the centralized config server. Whenever some need change needs to be made, the operations team needs to update the Git repository, for example, which the centralized configuration server is connected to, and the change will be propagated to the appropriate microservices. This would ensure that your operations team has an easy time, as well as you have just one place where you have all your configurations stored. You should always be careful about the security around this centralized configuration server because it stores a lot of sensitive information. So once you are 
clear and you establish good security, then you are good to go. In 28 minutes is providing awesome learning experiences to 300,000 learners across platforms like Udemy, Safari Online and Pact. We have clogged million hours of learning in the last few months. The question is what do you want to learn next? We are building solutions to help programmers at all levels. You can learn programming with our awesome courses on Java, Python and JavaScript. You can learn full stack development with REST APIs and microservices with a wide range of frameworks like Spring Boot, Node.js, React, Angular and Spring Cloud. We have 200 plus videos to help you start your journey from a programmer to a software architect. We have videos to help you learn frameworks, industry trends, including things like microservices, learn the best practices in architecture, design and code quality. Thanks for watching. Keep learning in 28 minutes.